What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my 2021 anticipated releases for the first half of the year. So the books I'm going to be sharing with you today are published from January to April. Most of these are own voices and if they aren't I will have that up on the screen. I would love to share all of the books I'm anticipating but unfortunately that would be like an hour long video. So I'll link down below my Goodreads shelf. It's titled 2021 and see all of the other books I'm anticipating in 2021. As always check my description for updated petitions and donation links. Let's get started. Starting with January I have two middle grades coming out on January 5th. First being Shaking Up the House by Yumil Saeed Mendez and this is a middle grade about a friendly prank war at the White House between the children of the President and First Lady and it is this transition period when the President-elect is going into the White House and the President is leaving and this just sounds really fun. I love the cover. That is what drew me to this book but it just sounds really fun and I can't wait to read it. Then we have the sequel to Goldie Vance and the Hotel Who Done It by Lillian Rivera which I read for a reading vlog and I didn't know this was getting a sequel and this is called Goldie Vance and the Hocus Pocus Hoax. Try and say that three times fast. Hocus Pocus Hoax. Hocus Pocus Hoax. Hocus Pocus Hoax. But I don't really know anything about this. The description says nothing. It just says that it's another mystery. I didn't know that they were publishing more. I enjoyed the first one enough to want to continue so I am excited for the next adventure that Goldie Vance is going on. This is about a queer biracial detective Goldie Vance and it is a novelization of the comic Goldie Vance by Hope Larson and I'm really excited about this. So since this is happening maybe I have to film another middle grade reading vlog. So those are the only middle grades coming out in January. Now on to the young adult releases. Still on January 5th I have Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. This is about Tessa Johnson who is on the quest to write the perfect romance novel after not seeing herself represented in books. She loves writing and she is accepted into a prestigious art school and once she gets there she has writer's block. We've all been there. So her friend Caroline puts a list together to give Tessa the perfect romance to give her some inspiration to start writing her own. This sounds really fun and I love contemporaries where the character has to complete a list so I know I'm going to enjoy this one. Next is a YA thriller and this is When You Look Like Us by Pamela N. Harris and this is about a boy named Jay whose sister goes missing and it is his job to find her. And it just talks about when you look like us, when you have black and brown skin, you're probably not going to be found. The blurb says when you look like us, brown skin, brown eyes, black braids or fades, people think you're trouble. No one looks twice at a missing black girl from the projects because she must have brought whatever happened to her upon herself. And so I imagine that this is going to be Jay's journey to find his sister and I love those kind of thrillers and I know that this is going to be an important read. I feel weird calling it a thriller because I feel like this is realistic fiction. Um this happens. And I know that there's a similar book which is Monday's Not Coming that also tackles this topic about missing black children and I do think this is just going to be a really hard hitting book and I'm excited to read it. This is another YA mystery thriller and this is a debut novel. This is one of the good ones by Maika Mooley and Maritza Mooley. This is about a teen and social activist Kenzie Smith who is killed under mysterious circumstances after attending a social justice rally and her devastated sister Happy and their family are left reeling in the aftermath as Kezi becomes another immortalized victim in the fight against police brutality. Happy begins to question the idolized way her sister is remembered. Perfect, angelic, one of the good ones. Even as the phrase rings wrong in her mind, why are only certain people deemed worthy to be missed? And that just sounds so powerful. And I cannot wait for this story. You all know that I love hard hitting stories. I love these kind of topics and I think this is going to be such an important story especially as we see this happening in real life. It is a real thing that happens and I just am so excited for this book. The last book coming out on January 5th. I know it feels like every book is coming out on that day. This is Pedro's Theory by Marcos Gonzalez. 
I'm not sure the audience for this so I'm just going to say adult. It's a non-fiction about a queer Latinx man and that's all I really know about it. I saw it on Twitter and I'm really excited for it. I love non-fiction and especially love reading from a queer perspective. I love reading queer non-fiction. I feel like I don't read it enough so I am excited for Pedro's Theory. I don't really know much more about it but the Goodreads link will be down below if you want to know more. Now we move on to January 12th and this is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, the prequel to The Hate You Give. This follows Maverick Carter star's dad from The Hate You Give and this is all about him in his teen years. I know it's going to talk about gang violence and just him finding out that he is going to be a teen dad and I just love Angie and I will pick up any book that she writes so I am very excited for this one. I have a romance and you're probably like what? Because I don't read romance at all but I think that we're all going to be reading some romance in 2021. This is The Meet Cute Project by Rhiannon Richardson. This is about Mia who hates rom-coms. She hates anything to do with romance but her friends love it. They eat it up and she is faced with the decision to find a wedding date for her sister's wedding. So her friends find it as the perfect opportunity to set up a meet cute for her. I love books about meet cutes so I am very excited for this one. Coming out on January 24th, I have The Knockout by Sajni Patel. This is about a 17 year old Indian American girl who is a Mai Thai athlete. This is Thai boxing if you don't know of the term. She has landed the chance of a lifetime an invitation to the US Mai Thai Open and so she could be an Olympian. I love books about Olympics so I am very excited for this one. The cover is amazing and that is definitely what drew me to it but I love sports books. I love books about Olympics so I can't wait for this one. Those were some of my anticipated releases coming out in January. Now we move on to February. Starting with February 2nd, Groundhog's Day and this is The Boy from Mish by Gary Lonesboro. This is an indigenous queer book about a 17 year old boy Jackson set in a rural Australian community. Jackson loves to paint and it also says that he has a secret so I imagine this is going to be a coming out story. Some of my favorite queer lit does have characters who paint so I really love those type of qualities in a character so I'm very excited for this one. Next is a YA historical fiction and this is Yesterday is History by Cusco Jackson and this is about time travel. It is queer time travel. I'm hesitant about reading time travel books because it can always be a hit or miss but this is queer time travel and it kind of gives me Back to the Future vibes so I'm here for this. Weeks ago Andre Cobb received a much needed liver transplant. He's ready for his life to finally begin. Until one night when he passes out and wakes up somewhere totally unexpected in 1969 where he connects with a magnetic boy named Michael. Do should I keep going? Um, then Andre realizes he can split his time bouncing from past to future but has the ultimate decision to make. Torn between two boys, one in the past and one in the present, Andre has to figure out where he belongs and more importantly who he wants to be before the consequences of jumping in time catch up to him and change his future for good. Whoa! I love that. It sounds so good and I can't wait to pick it up. Next I have a graphic novel. I really don't have many that I'm anticipating this year. This is Nubia Real One by L.L. McKinney. This is from DC and it is focusing on Nubia who is Wonder Woman's secret sister and I'm gonna be real honest I don't really like DC that much. I really am a big Marvel fan. I like the characters more. That's just my preference but I've chose to pick this one up because I have realized a lack of comics and graphic novels with black characters written or illustrated by black people. Like there's just so many with black main characters that are written by white people and so I'm hoping that we can get more going because I only know of Bingo Love. If you know of more definitely comment them down below. I just have seen a lack of them and so I'm hoping that this is some change and we get more and I'm really excited for this. I know Ella McKinney is a beloved author for her series um, A Blade So Black and so I'm excited for this one. Next I have the project by Courtney Summers who is the author of Sadie and this is a cult book. Next on February 7th I have a YA contemporary focused on a black character with OCD. 
And this is One Carefree Day by Whitney Amazine. This is about a girl named Willow who has OCD but she is unmedicated for it. And so the synopsis says, Willow must finally start taking meds to treat her obsessive compulsive disorder or she'll have to move out within three months. But Willow is terrified of both options and can't afford to support herself as a new cosmetology student. Only when Theo Tate moves in next door does Willow begin to see hope. Theo must have a way for Willow to avoid taking meds and still resist her rituals. And mingling with him has risks not even Willow could possibly control, let alone be prepared for. I love books with mental health rep, you all know this, and it is especially important to have books with black characters dealing with mental illness. So this is going to be a really important story. I am just hoping because the synopsis sounds like there might be a thing where Willow thinks that a boy is going to save her OCD. I hope to God that's not what it's about. So I will read it to find out, but I really hope that's not how it is. I'm sure it's not um, because you probably might have that mindset and then it is changed at the end. There are just many mental health books where the love interest saves them from their mental illness. And so I'm just really hoping that's not the case, but I am excited to read this one just for the OCD representation for a black character with OCD. I am just so excited for this. On February 23rd, Like Home by Louisa Nome. This is a debut YA contemporary about a girl whose life is turned upside down after one local act of vandalism throws her relationships and even neighborhood into turmoil. This is another instance where I love the cover, so I decided to add it to my TBR. The cover grabs my attention with the bold colors and the synopsis sounds really good as well, so I will be picking this one up. The sun's going down, so I've got to finish this up. Also on February 23rd, we have Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers, and this is about a 28-year-old girl who has just gotten her PhD in astronomy, and so her and her friends decide to go to Vegas to celebrate. She doesn't really get out of her comfort zone very often. She's an overachiever. When she goes to Vegas, she drunkenly marries a girl, and I am just so excited for that. I love books about older characters. From the reviews, I've read that this book talks about being in your 20s and as someone in their mid-20s, I feel like I'm going to be able to relate to this book. This sounds so good. I'm really lacking in reading books about older queer characters, so I am very excited for this one. It just sounds like it's going to be very chaotic and I am here for a book with chaotic energy. Speaking of queer books, moving on to March, coming out on March 2nd, I Think I Love You by Ariane DeSombre. This book was supposed to come out in 2020. I actually got an e arc of it but it is coming out in 2021 now because it was pushed. This is an enemies to lovers sapphic story about a girl named Emma who is a diehard romantic and the more practical minded Sophia who find themselves competing against one another for a coveted first prize trip to a film festival in Los Angeles. So what happens when their rivalry ends up being a romance? And I feel like this is what I wish I Kissed Alice was. No pun intended, but I do have a hate to love relationship with the hate to love trope. And that is just because it could either be a hit or miss. When I am reading A Hate to Love, I need it to wrap up at the end and actually be a love. So I'm excited for this one and to see if it's the hate to lovers romance that I've been wanting. So Once Upon a Quinceanera by Monica Hera Gomez. This is about a girl named Carmen who gets an unpaid internship for a place in Miami, Florida where she dresses up for quinceaneras and dances. And her company gets hired for her cousin Ariana's quinceanera and she finds out that her partner is one of her ex-boyfriends. This book sounds really fun and filled with drama and a lot of tension. And like most of the books on this list, this cover really drew me. It's stunning. On March 9th, we have Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. I read her debut, Only Mostly Devastated, and I loved it so much. And so anything she writes, I will pick up. She's also an Australian author, which I didn't know until I watched Henry's video. And so I'll link his video down below. I think he did a recommendations for Australian authors or queer Australian authors. So go and watch his video. This is about a bisexual girl who writes love advice for her classmates and is hired by a hot guy who wants to get his ex back. And that just sounds so good. Like I said, I loved Only Mostly Devastated. It was just so great. And so I'm very excited to read this one. 
you can see the sun going down. But next, I have American Batia, and I love this cover. It is gorgeous. It is a powerful story about a young artist grappling with first love, family boundaries, and the complications of a cross-cultural relationship. It is about a girl named Ronnie who is dating a boy named Oliver in secret, and she has to go to India for the summer. I'm guessing it's about long-distance relationships. It says that Oliver's home life um, unravels, so I'm sure that he is going through some things at home and she is going to India and so it's about a long distance relationship and first love. I really just love the cover but I also love what the synopsis is about and I can't wait to read this. Next is a book that I am actually getting an arc of. I've been in talks with the publisher and it took a little bit of convincing to get, um, which is kind of unfortunate, but in the long run, I am getting it. And this is Can't Take That Away by Steven Salvatore. And this is about a genderqueer teen, Carrie, who loves to sing. In their school's production of Wicked, they get the role of Elphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West. And y'all know I love a good trans theater book. There's so many this year and I'll be adding to that category because I am writing my own and I am just so excited for this. It just talks about music and theater and I'm here for it, especially having a genderqueer main character. I think that's great and his own voices and I am just very excited for this. Next, coming out on March 16th, this is probably going to surprise a lot of people if you have been on my channel and you know this about me. Um, and I am going to be adding an A.M. Macklemore book onto my TBR for 2021. I've been hesitant with picking up their books because when I read The Moon Was Ours, that really triggered me and I just didn't want to read anymore because I just didn't want to have that experience again. Um, at the beginning of their book, how they introduced the trans rep, it just really triggered me and I just couldn't continue you. And this is the mirror season and it is about teens that go to a party and they experience sexual assault and it is all about that. I am hoping that I can read some more of their books and not have that feeling anymore because I know that they are beloved by most of my friends and so I want to be able to do it. I think I've just been pushing myself back because I don't want to have to experience that again. So hopefully this will be a better experience. Next, I'm really shocked this is coming out in March. I thought it was going to come out later, but I'm excited nonetheless. And, and this is probably one of my most anticipated releases. And this is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. It is the first book that they've ever pitched. It is a Peter Pan retelling. And from what I've heard and what I've talked to people about, this is not a queer book. It is just a straight cishet book. But nonetheless, a Peter Pan retelling sounds amazing. You know, I love a Cemetery Boys, so I am going to be picking up any book that Aiden ever writes. And last, on March 30th, there's a middle grade that I received from the publisher through like ebook because we're not doing physical a lot anymore. And this is Breathing Underwater by Sarah Allen. I read and received an arc of her debut, What Stars Are Made Of, which has own voices, Turner Syndrome rep. I don't think I've read middle, I haven't read many middle grade books about mental health. This is about a girl named Olivia who is on the road trip of her dreams with her trusty camera and her big sister Ruth by her side. Three years ago before their family moved from California to Tennessee, Olivia and Ruth buried a time capsule on their favorite beach. Now they're taking an RV back across the country to uncover the memories they left behind. But Ruth's depression has been getting worse, so Olivia has created a plan to help her remember how life used to be. A makeshift scavenger hunt across the country like pirates hunting for treasure, taking pictures and making memories along the way. That just sounds so fantastic. I haven't seen many middle grade books about mental health or maybe I just haven't read enough of them or do I know about many but this one sounds really good and I just love mental health books so I will be picking this up before the release date and I'll let you know what I think of it. On March 6th, I have Somewhere Between Bitter and Sweet by Lakin Zekamp. As an aspiring pastry chef, Penelope has always dreamed of opening her own pastelaria next to her father's restaurant, Nachos Tacos, but her mom and dad have different plans, leaving Penn to choose between disappointing her traditional Mexican-American parents or following her own path. When she confesses the secret she's been keeping, her world is set into a tailspin. Then she meets a cute new hire at Nachos who sees through her hard exterior and asks a question she's been too afraid to ask herself. And this is also about immigration. So it is one about food and the restaurant business and a Mexican-American family, but it's 
it's also about immigration and other things like that. So I'm excited. I love books about food and about hard topics. So this sounds like it's going to be really good. Next, I have The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch. That's literally what his name is. This is about a gay promposal following a boy named Sky who wants to ask his crush Ollie to prom and he has 30 days. However, Sky's plans are leaked by an anonymous hacker in a deeply homophobic e-blast that quickly goes viral. You, you couldn't just let him do a cute promposal. You really just had to go there. So Sky is like, whatever, I'm not going to do this anymore. But his classmates push back and fight for him to keep doing the promposal. And so hopefully there is a happy ending and a happy promposal at the end. This just sounds really good. I'm very excited. I've heard that it has a trans side character, so that's why I was interested in it. But also a promposal I love. Very excited for this one. Next, on April 13th, I've already read this and I need everyone to pick it up and this is Between Perfect and Real by Ray Stove. This is about a boy named Dean who is out as a lesbian but he is actually a trans guy inside and I just can't contain my excitement for this book and just how much I love Dean's with all my being. Dean gets the lead role of Romeo in his high school's production of Romeo and Juliet and it makes him question a lot of things about himself and he ends up coming out as a trans guy and it is just great. Dean is a skater boy and I just love his book so much that I can't really contain my energy and I can't compile my thoughts and really talk about why I love it so much but I'll probably talk about it more in my end of the year quarterly wrap up but I just have to say I love this and I need everyone to pick it up because it's so good. I love it so much that it inspired me to write my own like retelling and theater book so I just love this. I love Dean. I have saw myself in him a lot and it is just great and it does talk about a different story about being trans, which I really enjoyed. It also talks about how people in the LGBTQ plus community can be transphobic and not even realize. So it does have a lot of good conversations. Then I have another graphic novel and this is The Disability Experience. It is a nonfiction graphic novel about disabled voices telling their stories. Now we're down to the final two. Moving angles a little bit because the sun's going down and I need some lighting. Um, there might be some glasses glare, but it's fine. <laughs> On April 20th, I have She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quindlin. This is another enemies to lovers sapphic book about a cheerleader and a basketball player who are sworn enemies. The one girl's car breaks down and so they are forced to carpool together. I've, I've read a book that has a similar trope to that which is shuffle repeat so I really enjoyed that one and I do like that trope so I'm excited to see where this goes. It just sounds awesome and I love the cover and I just love me a good sapphic book. And last is Kate in Waiting by Becky Abertali. I love her cover so much. <laughs> this is more like a best covers of the year video instead of what books I'm anticipating but I love Becky. I will read anything that she writes and this just sounds great. It's another theater book. We are getting the theater books this year and I am here for it. It's just going to be research for me. I'm just going to be researching for my book all year long. 2021 has already blessed me with a great reading year so I'm very excited for this and it's going to help me research for my book so it's great. It's a win-win situation. Um, and this is about two girls that are fighting over their crush that they had a long time ago and he's back at their school. I don't know what production they're putting on. It doesn't really say or maybe I missed it but I just love Becky and I'm excited for this book. I love this cover especially because it's very different from the Simon books and I'm just excited for Becky. I love her and that is it. Moving angles because that lighting and all was really horrible. So those were some of my 2021 anticipated releases. If you want to see my full anticipated releases, like I said, my Goodreads shelf will be down below. Let me know what book you're anticipating if you have any of these on your list. And that is it for me today. I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me there for only $1. And feel free to subscribe if you haven't so you can see some of my reviews for these books. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a great day and staying safe. And I will see you next time.